Reporter investigates, people in multiple areas reveal increasing death toll. A new round of unidentified respiratory disease epidemic has erupted in mainland China, leading to overcrowded pediatric hospitals. However, the infected are not only children but also adults and the elderly. Citizens report that local death tolls are once again on the rise. The new wave of respiratory disease has been circulating in Shanghai for several months, with major pediatric facilities overwhelmed. Simultaneously, adults and the elderly are getting infected. Zhang Hong, pseudonym, a Shanghai resident, revealed on December 7 that two relatives in his family have contracted the disease and are currently arranging funerals. Zhang Hong said, These two relatives of mine may pass away soon due to this respiratory infection. This term is definitely what the hospital said, a respiratory infection, coughing, and the symptoms are the same for both people. The reporter asked, Is there pneumonia? Zhang Hong said, There should be inflammation, probably the new coronavirus. Then, in just two days, they passed away. But I know these two people were originally in good health. They are both in their 80s, around 85. During the peak of last year's epidemic, these two elderly individuals had previously been infected with the CCP virus. Zhang Hong said, They were infected before, last year, when everyone was generally infected. The symptoms were not very severe, they got through it, and in about 10 to 15 days, they gradually recovered. So, these two relatives of mine still had a relatively strong constitution. The worst was a relative of mine who passed away last year, just two days, in December 2022, with a weak constitution, not even 80, in his 70s. In addition to relatives, there are also elderly people around Zhang Hong who have passed away. Zhang Hong said, Another elderly person nearby is also gone, similar situation. Looking at the proportion of my surroundings, in terms of big data, that proportion is already quite high, right? But now, it seems like they don't allow talking about it. We can't see these things online in our area. The news seems to be cut off. They don't allow talking about this. Mr. Liu from Wuxi City, Jiangsu Province, also noticed an increase in deaths in his neighborhood. The reporter asked, are there deaths now? Mr. Liu said, Definitely. In our community, you can hear the morning sound. There are about eight to 10,000 people in the community. In the morning, before you wake up, the morning comes more frequently than usual. In recent times, the morning sound relatively speaking, indicates a higher death rate. I'm sorry, we can't speak freely on the mainland unless you want trouble. Mr. Chin from Jinzhou City, Liaoning Province, also revealed that the number of deaths in their area has started to increase. Mr. Chin said, Now, in hospitals, deaths are increasing a lot. Don't look at the official numbers. In a simple house, how many people can die and be accommodated, they know in their hearts. The number of people in simple houses this year will definitely be higher than the year before. I dare not compare with last year because last year was almost full, it doesn't matter if it's burning or not. Zhang Hong stated that the current feeling is as if the epidemic is recurring, but everyone dares not mention it. Zhang Hong said, It's the same. If you go to the hospital around here, the situation is very frightening. It's all fever and coughing. But now, they don't admit it's this, don't admit it's the new coronavirus. Here, we say, this thing doesn't exist anymore. Earlier, a Beijing resident revealed that they waited in line for two hours to collect ashes at Babaishan Crematorium. Zhang Hong stated that such a situation has not yet occurred in Shanghai. Zhang Hong said, I heard that Shanghai has expanded last year, so this year, there haven't been queues. There are several crematoriums in Shanghai. Having experienced the peak of deaths at the end of last year and the beginning of this year, not only Shanghai but also Jinzhou City has expanded its crematoriums. The reporter asked, is the current situation the same as December last year, queuing for cremation? Mr. Chin from Jinzhou City, Liaoning, said, Queuing has already begun, but queuing now is no big deal. 
My hometown is Jianzhou, Liaoning. Why do I say the crematorium's operating capacity is okay? Last year, anyway, my hometown Jianzhou, maybe because of this, or maybe it also needs to expand production. So last year we built another crematorium called the funeral parlor. So, our place's capacity is no problem. We prepared a long time ago some time ago. Many citizens expressed lingering fears about the epidemic. Facing this new wave of unidentified respiratory diseases, they are unsure how to protect themselves and their families. A young man from Hunan revealed that he has already completed procedures to go to Malaysia, intending to work or do business there to avoid the epidemic in China. Wang Huning Behind the Scenes, Accelerating Interference in Taiwan's Election After Chinese Communist Party CCP, leader Xi Jinping recently inspected Shanghai on December 7, the CCP's mouthpiece, Xinhua News Agency, reported that the State Council of the CCP issued the so-called Systemic Opening Plan for the Shanghai Free Trade Zone, involving 80 measures across seven aspects. Among them, the most attention-grabbing measures pertain to cross-border investment and financing, as well as the outflow of financial data. It claims to support multinational companies in establishing fund management centers and allows financial institutions to transmit necessary operational data abroad. Analysts believe that these gestures made by the CCP authorities are meaningless, and foreign enterprises are unlikely to fall for them. Independent commentator Kai Shinkuin stated that the CCP is tightening its political control more and more, prioritizing so-called regime security. As long as this remains a priority, other measures are essentially meaningless. Moreover, for foreign enterprises, the existence of a counter-espionage law has already frightened them away. Former Shanghai entrepreneur Hu Liren also expressed that with the overall economic downturn, orders that were previously placed with China have shifted to other countries. Given this situation, the so-called open measures from the Shanghai Free Trade Zone are ineffective. Liang Xiaohua, former chief compliance officer of a mainland asset management company, pointed out that in recent years, the CCP has implemented the data security law and amended the counterespionage law to strictly control data. The directive is to keep all data within Chinese borders, and whoever allows data to leave the country must bear responsibility. In practical terms, officials are very cautious in approving such matters, and in reality, it may still be impossible for data to exit the country. Wang Huning Behind the Scenes, Accelerating Interference in Taiwan's Election with the Taiwan presidential election approaching, the CCP has expedited its efforts to interfere in the election. According to internal intelligence from Taiwan, the CCP held a high-level meeting in early December, emphasizing how to coordinate interference in Taiwan. The mastermind behind this meeting is Wang Huning. Reuters, citing information from Taiwan's intelligence agencies, reported that Wang Huning, deputy head of the CCP's Taiwan Affairs Work Leading Group, convened this ministerial-level meeting, attended by high-ranking officials from the CCP's Central Propaganda Department, the National Security Ministry, the Ministry of National Defense, and the Taiwan Affairs Office. According to Taiwan's Liberty Times, this meeting presided over by Wang Huning was not a routine one. Instead, it was convened specifically to address changes in the international situation and internal political dynamics in Taiwan. Wang Huning issued latest instructions at the meeting. In terms of interference operations, there will be a shift from a top-down, systematic, large-scale approach to a more fragmented and decentralized strategy.